Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner, and uh, in this tutorial I'll be taking you through a complete user authentication system with Cake PHP. Now, as you can see on the screen right here are my details. Here is my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash brainteamorg. My Instagram handle is instagram.com slash daveozala. My Twitter handle is twitter.com slash daveozala. My medium is slash at daveozala. And my Facebook handle is facebook.com slash daveozala. You can follow me on all these handles. And of course, if you have any questions, I can always answer them whenever you contact me. Now, the problem is that your users need to be authenticated and assigned roles. Now, the solution is that we have to build a system that has a login module, logout module, forgot password module, user profile, then allow certain routes because at some points we will be allowing certain routes to be accessed without the user having to log in first. Now we have a logout login with Facebook and login with Google. Now to kick off, we need to look install Cake PHP and here are the installation requirements. First of all, we need a HTTP server and a good example is the Apache server and uh, what we will do is to install WAMP server. WAMP server stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL and PHP. It's a combination of all the things you need in the, your server to run your application then we need to make sure that our php is above 5.6 and we need to make sure that mp string is enabled and then the international extension is enabled all right i'll walk you through these steps so you will know how to set up your own system so first of all you visit warmserver.com if you don't already have your warm server ready and um, make sure that it's in English so you click the English version and then when it opens you will scroll down to the download section so here is the download button so I'll just click it and it brings me to the download section I'm using Windows PC for this tutorial if you're using one Mac you should probably download MAMP if you're using Linux you should probably download LAMP so for this one we're downloading one all right so you check out your your pc what version mine is 64 bits and i'll hit on it and download i've already done this before and and it's already installed on my system so you download yours click on it and install after installation you start it and when you pull up by this point you'll see that you have your warm server already running make sure that your own color is green just like mine now the first thing we have to check is whether our PHP international extension is enabled in that case we will, we will hit on our taskbar and uh, you'll see this you hit on it once and then go to PHP first of all we check our version if you don't have version 7.0 you google how to install version 7.0 in your warm server and then once you make sure that you are in version 7.0 you can check out your php settings for international extension being enabled and then check out your php extensions First of all, as you can see, I already have international extensions enabled and then you have to check out your MB string. So right here in the extensions, we check for MB string. As you can see, PHP MB string is enabled. And one last thing we have to check out is in our Apache to make sure that mode rewrite is enabled. So this is, these are Apache modules and uh, we're looking for mode rewrite so we will scroll down until we get to 
more the right and see if it's enabled right here there we have it we back to Apache modules we scroll down until we get to R it is called rewrite module so our rewrite module is enabled that means our server is set up correctly and then the next thing we have to do is to head over to the installation of cake php so to install cake php you have to move to your windows and start up your your command prompt so i'm starting up my cmd and when it starts we're going to navigate to the folder where we will install cake php make sure you install cake php in the root folder of your application now the root folder of my application is in C164 www yours might be different so to find your root folder what you can do is you hit here check out this place and this is your www directory so when you click on it a folder will open and you check the address bar to make sure that it tallies with what you have here so you will navigate to this folder and the next thing you have to do is to install cake php using composer composer helps you to set up cake php and all the dependencies straight up it is an easy way to install cake php all right we will paste this and uh, just have to type this out in your command prompt make sure you have your internet connectivity on and then you're good to go this is the latest version of cake php and this particular name here is the the folder what i want to name my cake php folder this folder will be created inside my ww root folder and then it will install cake php inside it so when i hit enter it will start the installation and depending on the speed of your internet service this could take between one minute to five minutes all right, so you should sleep, relax, go take a cup of coffee, and by the time you're back, Cake PHP must have installed. So the installation is still on and about to finish. It's asking us to set folder permissions, and we can say yes. And there we are. It has updated our security salt and everything, and it's ready to run. And the next thing we will do is to open this folder we'll, we'll go into our kick off folder remember that is what we called um, the folder so we navigate into it and um, hit enter then we open the folder just to see what is inside on hit enter it opens the folder so this folder is in my c164 ww kick off that is where my one server was installed yours could be installed as a slight at a slightly separate path if you're using xamp then yours will be installed in htdocs not www now the next thing you have to do is to understand the folder structure of cake php and that is what we will be discussing before we round up this video tutorial the first thing is bin this is what handles all our console command line commands in cake php config this is where we set up basically configure our application in cake php this is where we set up our database our email configurations and a whole lot of things and here is where we decide what components are loaded with cake php and components and plugins and uh, here is where we determine our routes those are the three most important files in this folder the next thing we're going to look at is logs this is where cake php saves its logs so as your application is running it generate it's generating logs and this is where we will see them the next thing we will see is the plugins folder obviously this is the folder that has all the plugins and um, the src folder this is the main document we'll be working in 90 percent of the time if we open it we'll discover that there's a console file folder and then there is a controller if you are familiar with the mvc 
development pattern you will know what controller is but when we open our controller folder we will see that it already has certain controller folders set up for us this is our root controller the controller on the top of every other controller whatever we define here will be available in all the other controllers this is the controller that handles our errors and this is the default controller that comes with cake php it handles our uh, default pages and handles pages that don't use controllers sometimes during your development you may want to create a view that doesn't require a controller and doesn't require a a model this is the controller that handles it the next thing is the model as you can see our model is split into three we have entity we have tables and we have behaviors we will get to them when we start developing then there is the shell and there's the template this is where we all our view files are being saved for each of the views we want to build and then those are the most important folders here we can get back of course the tests is obvious and then the tmp where we save our temporary files for our cache our sessions and of course our tests and then you have vendor this this was installed by composer and then we have web roots this is the root folder of our application this is where we have our index.php this is where we save all our css and images and js files and that's pretty that pretty much sums it up the way it works is that the web server gets into this folder this htsx file redirects the web server into your web root then this web root hits your routes file and then start processing all right the next thing we're going to do before we round up this video tutorial is to actually see our application now make sure that your web server is running then you open a new tab on your browser type localhost and um, slash your kick the folder we created so we hit enter and then we watch it load when it loads it will tell us everything that is wrong or right with our application as you can see right here this is the default page being served by this file the file we have in our src controller template pages home.ctcp is the default folder that kick file kickbhp serves you if you've not defined what your home page should be so it is defined as the home page and now if we go back to our routes if we go back to our routes we see where kickbhp has defined it so we'll get back to config get back to routes we will see that kick php has set it up so both while our editor is opening let us understand what is written here first of all we've passed this test our version of kick php is above 5.6 actually it detected 7.0 which we have right here you click this you will see that we have php version 7.0 and now our mb string is set up as we saw in the beginning and uh, our opens ssl extension is set up and uh, international extension is set up now our directories are writable kick php made our directories writable while we were installing because it asked us to if it could change the directory permissions for us and now uh, everything including our fire engine are used for caching now we uh, the bucket is loaded properly but we have only one error our database is not set up that's where we have a red um, marker so what we will do is to set up our database and then we connect it to our cake php application now to set up our database we have to move to a new tab and uh, open our php my admin in our local host php my admin we enable us to set up our database and then we have to head back over to kick php and connect it now when it opens we have to log in to our database file all right so we hit this login button and um, wait to be logged into our php my admin 
I don't expect this to be the first time you are meeting this interface of PHP My Admin because you're expected to have known how to write PHP code before you can learn Cake PHP. All right, we'll hit on databases and remember that PHP My Admin is just a database management system. Apart from PHP My Admin, you could use any other database management system like MySQL Yog or MySQL Workbench or whatever. So we're going to create a database. I'm just going to call this database kick off and I'm going to leave the collection as default and I'll hit create. Once it creates, good. As you can see, no tables have been created in the database for us. What we will do is to head over to our config folder in our kick default folder, I'll head over to our config. We want to tell kick PHP to use this database. So we'll look at our app.php and double click on it when it opens we are going to scroll down as you can see this is basically your core settings file for cake php our uh, debug is set to true you can set it to false when you move to production and if you gradually scroll through you will see a whole lot of custom settings for our cake php but what we are looking for specifically is the setup for the database you will see settings like email transport and um, a whole lot of stuff now here we are at the set of our database we are going to enter our login username and then right our password we have to specify a password i wouldn't like to type my password here and our database is kick off and uh, the rest is pretty much default now the problem that the mistake many people make is to mistake this second database settings for the first one. What Cake PHP does is that this default one is the default it does that you can use to connect to your database. But if you scroll down, you'll see a sample connection parameter for your Cake PHP. And for this one, it is named tests. So if you are running tests, you could have a test database and have your main database. And of course, you could create more. So when you are sending your query, you could specify the database to perform the query on so remember that the first one you need to the main one you need is this one the one that is labeled default all right now we have set up our database if we now head back to our cake php application we will see if it works well right now so here is our cake php application we will refresh it and we will see how it does after the refreshing as you can see it is refreshing right now and when it has refreshed and we did well this red marker should change to a green marker right here as you can see uh, we now have a green marker to verify that we have done well with our cake php now the next thing we have to check is the route how this page was created if you go back to your route file we get back to our route file inside our config folder we will see that cake php actually specified right here that if someone visits our home page it should take the person to our pages controller and our action and display home so that display home is what brings out this particular page so as our application will start running we may want to redirect the user to a login page instead we have not created the login page, but I would like to say that we'll create it later on further down the tutorial. So we have uh, the once the home page user hits the home page, they should hit our login our users controller, and the action should be login. All right, the login page should show when the user hits the home page. So at this point, we will stop this particular video and see you in the next video tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.